Tonight, delayed 1B vaccine rollout begins in private Broken Hill GPs. And embers from a prescribed burn causes a grass fire near Coffin Bay. From our seven Spencer Gold Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamei begins now. Good evening. There's been a delay in Broken Hill's COVID-19 vaccine rollout, with frontline health workers now waiting to receive their jabs later this week. That's despite GPs in the town giving their first vaccines today. Our reporter Lachlan Itter has the details. The first vaccinations were to be given here at Broken Hill Health Service at 8.30 this morning. But late yesterday, local health authorities revealed the rollout for frontline health workers was being pushed back. In a statement, the Far West Local Health District says unforeseen circumstances surrounding the delivery of the vaccine has caused the delay. Although the exact cause is unconfirmed, the flood disaster on the East Coast has led to difficulties distributing COVID-19 vaccines to regional New South Wales. Whilst um, the flood situation is obviously top of mind for us, um, so is making sure we roll out the vaccine program as far as the state government's concerned. The first frontline health workers are now expected to receive their jabs in Broken Hill on Wednesday. In the meantime, Phase 1B has begun. Maureen O'Donnell believed to be the first person in Broken Hill to get the vaccine, rolling up her sleeve at Marimar this afternoon. We need to do it for our... Uh... Our community, I'm proud to be the first one to do it. Indigenous Australians over the age of 55 among the first in the community to be vaccinated. Potentially we could do up to 80 a day uh, vaccinations. We currently have stock of over 400. South Medical Centre is also taking part in the GP rollout. All other facilities within the Far West Local Health District will begin their vaccination programs next Monday. Meanwhile, Phase 1B of the COVID-19 vaccination rollout has also begun across South Australia. The most vulnerable community members rolling up their sleeves for the AstraZeneca jab. Those currently eligible include anyone aged over 70, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people over 55, over 18s with underlying medical conditions and health and high-risk workers. Broken Hill has been spared the heaviest of falls from a rain system crossing the far west. Up until 2pm this afternoon, 2.6 millimetres of rain had been recorded in the city. Tibberborough and White Cliffs were the hardest hit, with a severe weather warning for heavy rainfall issued this morning. A flood watch was also issued in South Australia's northeast and northwest pastoral districts. Meanwhile, two groups made up of South Australian emergency service workers have been deployed to assist with the emergency on New South Wales' east coast. Lingering embers from a prescribed burn are believed to have sparked yesterday's scrub fire on Air Peninsula. Crews racing to the scene before flames could spread to nearby buildings and livestock. Our reporter Nathan Rector has more. It was just after 2.30 yesterday afternoon when emergency crews rushed to Wongri after reports a fire had been spotted in a tree line. CFS and farm fire units battled the blaze as flames peaked through scrubland. It's understood the fire came within 200 metres of farm buildings and livestock. <laughs> but it was quickly contained. Embers from a prescribed burn in the Coffin Bay National Park are being blamed for sparking yesterday's fire. It's understood dry conditions over the weekend is causing the fire activity to remain at a higher than expected level. But authorities say there's no immediate risk to the community, with the fire still within its containment lines. The control burn, which started Friday, is still being managed by crews. Contingency plans are in place, with air support on standby at Port Lincoln Airport. A helicopter has also been dispatched to assist crews on the ground. Residents are being warned large amounts of smoke will be visible from the area. Crews will remain on site, monitoring the fire ground until it's considered safe. Still to come tonight, police plea for information on a recent break-in at a Wallaroo hotel. And a real-time fuel pricing app officially goes live for local motorists. Welcome back. York Mid North Police are calling for community help to identify suspects captured in a break-in at a Wallaroo hotel last week. At around 4.15 on Wednesday morning, Police were called to a hotel on Alexander Street 
where two men were captured on CCTV breaking into the premise. Police say a coin machine was stolen, which was later found in scrubland 500 metres away from the hotel. Tens of thousands of dollars worth of oyster spat has been stolen from the waters at Cow. Police say 30 trays containing more than 1.5 million spat were targeted from the lease last November. It's estimated it's worth more than $50,000 but could fetch much more once the oysters mature. Meanwhile, police are on the lookout for a mobility scooter which was stolen from a Port Lincoln home over the weekend. It's understood thieves gained entry into a carport on New West Road sometime between four yesterday afternoon and eight this morning, then making off with a red brand mobility scooter. The vehicle has an orange flag and is modified to hold a small red esky, which was found dumped at Centenary Oval. Anyone with information on any of these incidents is encouraged to contact police. An alleged drink driver has lost his licence in Roxby Downs yesterday. Just after 2am, police stopped a vehicle for a roadside driver test. The 25-year-old motorist from New South Wales allegedly returned a reading of 0.161. He was reported for drink driving and was issued an instant loss of licence and his vehicle was impounded. He'll also face court at a later date. Australia's Red Cross mobile donor vans are currently touring the region, spending this week in Wyala. The team encouraging residents to roll up their sleeves and donate blood, with every contribution helping to save a life. Taking a seat in these heroic chairs, South Australians across the state making a life-saving donation, giving their blood to those in need. Donated blood can help a wide range of people, whether it be young mums in childbirth, whether it be premature babies, it might be someone that's been in a car accident, or often it's people undergoing cancer or immunotherapy. The Lifeblood donor vans now in Wyala until Thursday. Starting this week's operations at the front of the city's Westlands Hotel. Staff encouraging locals to pick up the phone while they're here and make a booking. This simple act helping save a life. This is my nine, 99th and I'm hoping more within the next couple of weeks, couple of months or so I'll be up to my 100. Hopefully, don't know because I've donated around Australia. One in three people will need blood or blood product in their lifetime and yet only one in 30 donate. There are currently still 25 opening appointments left for those interested in donating. If you're between 18 and 75 and feel fit and healthy, um, if you've got an interest in donating blood and not sure whether you're eligible, give us a call on 13 14 95. And if you miss out on donating this week, the Lifeblood vans will be back in Wyala in June. They'll be heading to Port Lincoln next, arriving on April 19. Donating blood is a very easy process. It takes about an hour of your time, but it's a very rewarding thing to do. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. South Australians can now shop around for a better deal on petrol, with real-time fuel pricing officially going live over the weekend. Motoring authorities are celebrating the new laws, hoping they'll give regional motorists some relief at the Bowser. A win for regional motorists with real-time fuel prices now live. The reality is the consumers are the big winner today. They'll finally have uh, apps out there that have got accurate data they can rely on, shop and save money with. South Australia's RAA has called for real-time fuel prices for years, saying it could save motorists $30 a tank. The reality is has been long overdue, but now that it's here, we want everybody really to start using it. It follows the current spike in prices burdening regional motorists. And for once they'll actually be able to, to see the real fuel prices and, and hopefully get savings out there where they rely on their car much more and their fuel bills are higher. Retailers will be required to log their latest prices. Motorists can report price discrepancies to consumer and business services. On the spot fine uh, to deal with uh, any breaches, uh, but of course he has the power to uh, fine a retailer. Regional motorists are being encouraged to download one of the many available apps during the two-year trial. At the end of two years we'll review this. If it's doing really well and there's nothing better out there, I expect it will continue. My RIA app. You don't need to be a member to access it, but you go in there and it'll have the real-time fuel prices. Shari Hams, 7 Spence Golf News. Stay with us after the break. More locals dobbing their neighbours, breaking COVID-19 rules. And a Broken Hill film takes out the top gong at the Perfect Light Festival.
Hello again. An increasing number of residents have been dobbing in those breaching South Australia's COVID-19 restrictions. More than 2,000 calls have been made to Crime Stoppers since the pandemic started. It's been one of the busiest years on record for Crime Stoppers. The organisation says COVID-19 has seen a spike in phone and online reports. Oh, I think it is uh, important that the community uh, support the police and do um, report uh, offences. Crime Stoppers receiving more than 4,000 reports last year, with half of those related to COVID-19 specific incidences. Residents calling in about potential breaches of self-quarantine and self-isolation orders and businesses suspected of non-complying with restrictions. We've had um, little or no uh, community spread in, in South Australia. We want to keep it that way. South Australia's Crime Stoppers chairperson, Sharon Hanlon, in a statement says it's reassuring people are clearly motivated to do all they can to protect the community. So far this year, 145 calls regarding potential COVID breaches have been made. Police handing out hefty fines for those caught doing the wrong thing. And we have seen... Um, a lot of the restrictions are uh, relaxed. If you see any concerning behaviour or are aware of any businesses not complying with South Australia's COVID-19 restrictions, police urge you to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Clare Valley SCA Gourmet Week has officially released its itinerary with many indulgent dinners and special events on the cards in May. Organisers say this year is bigger and better, with hopes the event will bring in more tourists to the region. As the weather starts to cool, Gourmet's annual festivities fast approach in picturesque Clare Valley. It's a very exciting new lineup this year. We've got a, a longer period. We've got Gourmet over 10 days, so two weekends and the week in between. So lots and lots of things to go and see and do. Kicking off on May 14th, last year's event was cancelled due to COVID-19, but organisers say this year will be bigger and better. Wineries will be holding their traditional big events. And the second weekend is a little bit different. Uh, the association's got three events hosted on the second weekend. We're going to be doing a vintage tasting and a Riesling masterclass and a gourmet market. Fantastic dinners throughout the week uh, that are hosted by different people. There's also the grand opening of one of the new establishments here in Clare Valley. Winemakers say the event is a draw card for the region and will create a buzz around town. To try and get more people up to the Clare Valley to experience what we know is a fantastic area and we really want them to come up and realise what's in their own state. It's not just wineries said to reap the benefits. Gourmet is spread around a week not just for the wineries but also for the people, the restaurants, accommodation and it's we're, there's a real focus on region. A full itinerary can now be found online. Bookings are through the clairevalley.com.au website and that's um, run by the Clare uh, Wine, Food and Tourism Centre so they're the ladies to talk to. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. For the first time in history, a local filmmaker has claimed top prize at the Perfect Light Film Festival. The event's still drawing hundreds of eager eyes despite moving indoors and being delayed by several months. Bringing the outdoors in, this year's Perfect Light Film Festival may not look the same, but the on-screen talent hasn't changed. It's got a bit of a, a special vibe. Um, we're trying to maintain that kind of carnival at atmosphere that the outdoor event had. More than 400 people filling the Civic Centre for a night at the movies. The silver screen lighting up 12 short films shortlisted. <laughs> And for the first time in its four years, it was a local film which took top spot. Small change praised by judges for its intrigue and technical skills. It was great to see it up on the screen and see the audience reaction and then to, uh, to win the thing, just a huge bonus. The story inspired by the social isolation we've all felt of late. A lot of people come shopping every day, sometimes twice a day, because it's their only social interaction. The next generation of filmmakers also showcasing their work at a time when Australian cinema is on the rise. Currently we have the whole of Hollywood in Australia because they can't film in America. Lachlan Uta, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll bring you an overview of weekend cricket matches and we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back.
The Port Augusta Cricket Grand Final kicked off over the weekend with Central Stirling taking on Corn for the Premiership title. Our reporter Katrina Musson has this week's cricket wrap. In a tight game of cricket, Central Stirling secured the Premiership title over Corn in the Port Augusta Cricket Grand Final. Central Stirling had been top of the ladder all year, but just missed out on heading straight into the grand final after a shock turnaround from Quorn in the semi-finals. It was Central Stirling who won the toss and chose to bat first. Connor Harrison and Orson Poole put on 30 runs, but Poole lost his wicket to Corey Finlay. This brought out Central Stirling captain Drew McDonald, who batted patiently to make 76 runs of 112 balls. Dean Miller made 17 runs in his innings. Cameos from Nathan Khan with 26 and Sam Carter with 19 saw Central Stirling post a competitive score of 189. Quorn started the run chase badly after losing Liam Burry for a second ball duck. However, captain Alex Hosking and rising star Eric Brereton put on an 85 run stand, putting Quorn in a strong position to chase down the required total. Once Brereton and Hoskin were dismissed, the Quorn run chase faltered and they were bowled out for 169. Will Tucker was a surprise packet with the figures of 4 for 11 of 4 overs. Central Stirling securing their title as the season premieres of the Port Augusta Cricket Association. In Port Lincoln and the preliminary finals saw Charlton take on Tasman at Centenary Oval. Tasman batted first, setting the target at 8 for 160. Coleman was the best of the Charlton bowlers, taking three wickets for 33 runs. But it wasn't enough to get them over the line, with Tasman securing their spot in the grand final. They will take on Southern Air this weekend. And that's all for cricket. We'll be back tomorrow night with a wrap-up of the region's other sports. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, Ruby. Mainly fine conditions across the Gulf, except for in the far north and north of the region, where there were some wet conditions. From 3pm today, Port Lincoln was sunny and reached 28 degrees, a shower or two in Broken Hill, 18 degrees, partly cloudy in Port Pirie, 30 degrees. Looking further out now, Port Augusta and Clare both partly cloudy, 28, mostly sunny in Wyala, reached 26 degrees, Woodner partly cloudy, 31, Kadena and Cleve both mostly sunny and 29 degrees, Cooperpedia a shower or two clearing 20. Adelaide was mostly sunny 25 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, extensive thick cloud crossing central and northern districts due to a broad trough is causing rain. Heavy near the NT border. Cloud forming in the west near the trough is generating a few storms. Skies are clearer in the south due to dry easterly winds and a high pressure ridge. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. North easterly winds 10 to 15 knots sees around one metre and will increase to one and a half metres by the early evening and south to southwesterly swell below one metre. Partly cloudy in Port Lincoln 25 degrees, Cleve mostly sunny set to reach a high of 26 degrees there, Woodner sunny and 30. While in Kadena both mostly sunny set to top 27 degrees, Port Augusta sunny and 29. Port Pirie mostly sunny 28, similar conditions in Clare 26 degrees there and partly cloudy in Broken Hill to top 28. Taking a look further through the week now, sunny conditions in the far north, north and east of the Gulf. Cooper Pedy to reach 32. Broken Hill will top 27. Port Augusta 28. Partly cloudy conditions across the rest of the region. A max of 27 in Port Piri and Woodna. Wyala 26. Kadena and Port Lincoln both cloudy and 25. And if you're heading to Adelaide, it'll be showers and 24 there. Mainly fine conditions on Thursday. Partly cloudy in Cooper PD top of 28 there. Broken Hill and Port Augusta both to top 25. Woodner and Port Pirie 24. Kadena and Port Lincoln also cloudy conditions 22 degrees and similar conditions in Adelaide 21. Showers in parts of the Gulf on Friday mainly fine elsewhere. Showers Cooper Pedy and 29 degrees, Broken Hill sunny and 26, rain in Port Augusta 27, similar conditions in Woodner and Port Lincoln 23 degrees, Port Pirie 27, Cadine and Adelaide will both reach a top of 24 degrees. So it's set to be a pretty mild week of weather with rain to set in towards the end of the week. That's all the weather from me for tonight, it's back to you Ruby.
Wonderful. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.